lost again going back around dreaming of a time when i get things right well good day everybody welcome to another video i was out shooting with my olympus 30 millimeter macro the other day which has a very short minimum focusing distance and started actually thinking about that how a lot of people tend to prefer the longer minimum focusing distance so i figured i'd do a video today actually discussing that maybe the pros pros and cons of the two different ones hopefully the wind's not getting in this and um if any of you more experienced guys or gals uh want to put your opinion in the comments of whether you prefer the shorter or the longer minimum focusing distance i'm sure that would help a lot of people that are maybe new and thinking about what kind of lens to get and i'm going to go ahead we're going to walk a riverbank over here and we're going to see if i can find our first subject and then we'll get into the discussion So something I want to point out before I get into any of this is that when you're talking about anything, what's the best or which one you should use, it's very rare that one thing fits all. So you have to keep that in mind. I could sit here and I could say, get the one with the longer focal length, you're going to be happier, that's the one you want. And then after you get more experience, you find out you actually prefer the shorter focal length. Or it could be vice versa. So when listening to anybody's opinions, experience, uh, looking at the photos they take, just keep in mind your personal preference might end up being different than theirs and you might not actually get the same results they get with the equipment that you think you should use because they're using it. Well, I just took a picture of my first subject and first thing I can tell you with this lens is I wasn't actually very close to it and that's because this lens is actually a two and a half times magnification lens on the micro four thirds system. So it's minimum focusing distance which is basically right there. That's with two and a half times magnif magnification. So I don't actually have to be that close to get a picture of the subject. I can actually back off a little bit and the zoom on this is actually rather quick and still get an image that's more one-to-one -one, like a normal macro lens. So just because I'm using this lens, I want everybody to know that doesn't mean I'm right up there on the glass taking an image. That said, to get that close, I don't have any problems. Even in the middle of the day like this, where it's hot, as you can see with the plants blowing around behind me, it's actually pretty windy today. I still don't have any problem with this lens getting right up on the insect that I'm taking an image of. And I do get more favorite images out of this lens with a very short minimum focusing distance than I do my other setup that has a relatively long focusing distance, one that more people tend to prefer. So as far as that goes, I think there's a lot of experience and preference that goes into it. One, you learn more how to approach the insects without scaring them away, and you can get closer even with a short minimum focusing distance. Two, other people might just prefer to have it a little bit easier and to be able to stay a bit away from the insect to get their images. Again, I think that's just preference and experience and your opinion on it might even change the more you do macro. I mean, I can tell you when I first began, I would have preferred a longer focal length, but now I find myself grabbing this lens more than my other setup. Okay, so here's a perfect, ex a perfect example of why you might want a longer minimum focusing distance. Right there is a wasp nest and i'm not sure what kind of wasp that is i'm not going to get any closer because as soon as i started going in there they all kind of started facing me so i'm pretty sure they don't want me over there but with my other setup right now i can guarantee you uh, given that i've used it quite a bit that i can get a photo of some of those wasps on their nest 
with that setup. This setup with a minimum focus distance, I just have to keep walking. There's no way I'll get an images, images of those wasps right now without possibly disturbing them and maybe even getting stung. Okay, so we've walked up and down this a little bit. Definitely harder to find insects right now because they did just mow the grass. Another thing I want to point out though with the minimum focusing distance where you can run into an issue is when you have an insect kind of inside a bush and you're trying to get your gear down into the bush close enough to get the image, you can actually run into a problem there. As you can see, I have a very small DIY diffuser on this. I don't always have an issue with that. It's, uh, it is kind of rare, it seems to me, but every once in a while I do run into that problem where I'll pass something up that I really want a photo of just because I can't get down into the bushes with my gear. Whereas if I had a long, longer focal distance, I could kind of just sit on the outside of the bush and still get the image I wanted. Here's a perfect example of where the two and a half times magnification is gonna come in handy on this lens. I have what I believe is a caterpillar and it might actually be dead because we just saw a spider run off of it. So if I had to guess, I'd say the spider's already attacked this guy. But what it's gonna do is allow me to get a very close, close image of it. All right, so another con I can tell you about the minimum focusing distance is your diffuser. Most of the diffusers um, that you buy on the market aren't gonna get close enough to the lens to actually get your light in front of the subject you're trying to take an image of. As you can see, I've done the old Pr Pringles uh, DIY diffuser here, and I actually had to try this a couple of times to get it just right, to get enough light right in front of the subject. And that is, I'm talking if I'm doing the two and a half times magnification on here. And I actually had to even little, leave a little slit cut open here without it being diffused, just to make sure enough light actually gets there. Now, one of the cons of having a longer minimum focusing distance is being able to find your subject in the lens or on the screen. Uh, people do tend to have a little struggle. You know, if your subjects say where my toes are and your lens is back here, you're going to be floating around trying to find that very tiny subject in your screen. It's going to be much more difficult. Whereas with a shorter minimum focusing distance, you're basically right up on the subject and it's, I mean, you get it right in the screen. It's not hard oh, at all. So we've been out here for quite a while. It's extremely windy. They just cut the grass. We haven't seen many insects because of that. That's usually how it works. We, we usually come back out after the grass has grown a little bit and we see a lot more and get a lot more images. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call it for now and head home and maybe travel to some other locations and take a bunch more images. And I will use all those images in this video and I assure you that they will all be taken with the Olympus 30 millimeter macro. Um, just to give you an idea of what you can get with a lens that has the shorter fo focusing distance. And if you want to see all the details on this particular lens, I'll leave an Amazon link in the description, which you can click and read up on all of the, the um, specs and everything of the lens, if that's something you, you want to look into. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please, again, leave your comments uh, to help other people out. Leave your opinions of what you think of the longer and shorter focal length. Um, stay tuned. I'll put a bunch of photos at the end of the video for you to enjoy. And like usual, I'll see you all in the next video. I
Change.